Fox's hit sketch comedy show in living color gave birth to many revolutionized cultural aspects. From its innovative production and writing style to its flyest of its fly girls, Keenan Ivory Wayans' vision propelled some of your favorite top-rated celebrities, from Jim Carrey and Jamie Foxx to Rosie Perez and no other than Jennifer Lopez. Setting foot onto the show's main stage in its third season, Jennifer was merely an unknown talent, and Rosie a well-respected yet fairly new choreographer who'd been tasked with whipping in Living Colors dance troupe into shape, both figuratively and literally. Almost. How'd Rosie go from caping for Jen to serving her a New York-style combo in the parking lot is a story within a story of its own. Both Rosie Perez and Jennifer Lopez are two of the most recognized Latinas in entertainment, dominating the industry back in the early to late 90s. Although Jennifer's fame didn't blossom until after her portrayal in the 1997 autobiographical film Selena, before Jennifer was Jennifer, she was a baby-faced teen chasing a dream where she'd get a taste of fulfillment upon auditioning for In Living Colors Dance Squad. Rosie Perez, on the other hand, by that point in her career, had already become a well-established choreographer, dancer, and actor, appearing in films like Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing, and even before that, starred as one of Soul Train's most fierce dancers. You know, before she got fired for chucking a chicken wing at Don Cornelius. Her aggressive, high-energy dance moves surely made Rosie stand out from the crowd. And her kitty pumping arm-flailing routines helped her gain notoriety, which helped seal her a deal on Keenan Wayans' new sketch comedy, In Living Color, after actress and dancer A.J. Johnson, yes, Jody's mama from the film Baby Boy, had pulled out last minute in favor of a starring role alongside Kid and Play in their comedic film, House Party. There's actually multiple stories of how Rosie got her choreographer job on the show as well as multiple recollections of how Jennifer got her spot, which we'll be breaking down later on in the video. With Rosie now choreographing for the Fly Girls, the girls weren't missing a beat, nor was Rosie about to let that happen. Needless to say, Rosie ran that thing like a dictatorship. Not a back, leg, or finger out of place. Keenan Wayans had ordered Rosie to make sure the fly girls were, well, fly. Flyer than fly. Even if they were set to only perform after the show's opening credits and before and after commercial breaks. The group originally consisting of Carrie Ann Anaba, Deidre Lang, Carrie French, Lisa Tan, Michelle Morrison, and Barbara Lumpkin had had to be hip to the latest moves and with Rosie having connects to the underground dance scene, she knew exactly which tricks and tools to utilize. Although Keenan preferred the troupe to give every bit of MC Hammer realness, Rosie wasn't going for it. If you want Hammer, go get Hammer. One thing about Rosie, she was not one to be played with by any means. Her first day on the job was uncomfortable, both for the girls and herself. Straightforward and to the point was her ideal method of teaching, but the girls just weren't used to such NY aggression. Aggression that stemmed from a much deeper place than Rosie wanted to admit. Written in her 2014 memoir, Handbook for an Unpredictable Life, How I Survived Sister Renata and My Crazy Mother and Still Came Out Smiling with Great Hair. And before you ask, yes, that's the actual title of the book. She went into further details about her career, relationships, and upbringing. So Rosie, using Soul Train creator Don Cornelius's forehead as target practice when she threw that KFC chicken leg wasn't just some random outburst, but perhaps misplaced anger due to years of mistreatment. Growing up with a mentally ill, abusive mother who later contracted AIDS, being pinched and slapped around by religious nuns your whole childhood? That'll do it. Rosie's younger years were far from perfect, and although she had a college degree in biochemistry and was now on one of Fox's top-rated shows, the deeper turmoil stemming years back was eating her all the way up. 
although we must give her her props because in Living Color Rosie was way more lenient than Soul Train Rosie. And it showed when Jenny from the block sashayed right into Rosie's office with a vengeance, attempting to put the paws on Perez. But before we get into the nitty gritty, let's take it back to 1991, the day Jennifer auditioned for the show. And Living Color was a knockout by this point, racking up millions of viewers within its first two seasons. By the time its third season came about, changes were being made to the overall show and viewership, although greater than great compared to today's standards, began to waver. Some of the original Fly Girls had been dropped like, well, flies. And in came another batch. Among the 700 and something plus auditioning, an unknown Jennifer Lopez and her natural curls were front or middle and center, giving it her best shot. Auditionees not only had to bust a Rosie Perez choreographed move, but they also had to sing. And uh, if you've seen Jen's original audition video, then you already know how that went. No shade. To make a long story short, Jennifer was good, being chosen in Rosie's top three picks but not good enough in the newest addition to the Fly Girls had gone to then 19-year-old Carla Garrido. Let Rosie tell it, she personally wanted Jennifer and fought hard for her spot. Yet it was Keenan Ivory who wasn't feeling it, nor was he gonna allow Little Miss Baby Fat to mess up his troop aesthetic. Mm-hmm, you heard right. According to Rosie, Keenan thought Jen was just a little too chunky to fit in with the rest of his dancers. Not only was she one hot dog away from obesity, but she wasn't that good of a dancer. And before y'all start, I'm obviously being sarcastic. Maybe not about that second part though. She was bigger compared to the rest, outright corny, and Keenan was not about to have some chunky foot Latina from the Bronx messing up what he'd work for. Now, you know these stories can never just be straight and to the point, because let Keenan tell it, he actually gave the rest of the Fly Girls the choice to vote for who they wanted their new dance sister to be. It obviously wasn't J-Lo, but oh, not so fast. According to show producer Eric Gold, Keenan had liked Jennifer so much, in fact, he ordered Eric to have the Fox Network put Jennifer on a holding deal for an entire year until she was clear to be a part of the show. Given that, once Jen finally did get onto the show, she was always placed in the back or rarely seen. We aren't so sure just how accurate that last recall might be. Rosie and Keenan ultimately went with LA native Carla Garrido via the audition tapes that can be found on the internet. And yet when the third season aired, we'd see Jennifer in her place instead. Things that make you go, hmm. It wouldn't be long before the complaints rolled in. The other girls weren't feeling Lopez at all and let it be known that Jenny from the block was a manipulative snake. This was a group effort, and here Jennifer was treating the rest of her posse like she was David Ruffin, and they were the Temptations. Not only had Jennifer manipulated Rosie to her advantage, according to the girls, but she was also manipulating hair, wardrobe, and makeup in order to make herself stand out from the rest. Initially, Rosie shrugged off the gin backlash, thinking it was due to the girls growing jealous of Jennifer. But all that flew out of the window once Jen dropped her sweet girl act and came storming into Rosie's proximity, raging like, quote unquote, some ghetto biatch. Yelling and pounding on her chest and whatnot, Jennifer let Rosie have it. You pick on me, me and only me, every effing day. I work my butt off, deliver, and you keep pushing me aside, treating me like crap. I know I'm good. I'm better than any of these girls and you know it. We definitely had to censor some of those words, but y'all got the gist. Little did Jennifer know, sure, Rosie was critiquing her as she did with the other girls, but it was Keenan ordering Rosie to critique her and take her out of certain scenes if he thought Jen looked a little chubby that week. If you thought Chicken Chuck and Rosie was a mad hatter being provoked by not even the best dancer in the group, not my words, was enough to set Chica all the way off. The girls were going at it, and once Jennifer shouted her final F you, 
and told Rosie to meet her outside in the parking lot, Rosie said, Bet, F you, I'll kill you, and proceeded to head out into the vehicle preserved boxing ring. That is until Keenan himself intervened and settled their rage-filled banter. Fellow fly girl Carrie Ann Anaba practically confirmed the feud between the dancers and Jennifer giving her own recollection of her fun days as fly girls. What was sad was before Jennifer came in, there was no sort of competition. We were five girls who were all really happy to have work and we loved being the fly girls. It was something new. We had a great time and it was a really strong family atmosphere. Jennifer and I never really got along. She has a strong personality that sometimes made it challenging for all of us, including her. She unabashedly goes after what she wants. It's not my style, but I was always impressed with how much she wanted certain things and how she went after them with no apologies. Jennifer would eventually leave in living color after being on the show for just two seasons. Acting would be her next endeavor, and if the people didn't know her name during that Fox sketch show, they definitely were aware after 1997. She'd go on to pursue music following her Selena run, and we all know how that end up. Now, one of the biggest celebs to spin out of the 21st century and long gone from her fly girl days, one thing that has stayed consistent was her beef with Rosie. Just as we thought everything was water under the bridge. During a sit down with W Magazine, Jen discussed her role as Selena amongst other things, including landing stereotypical roles during her younger acting years, which is no problem in itself, but it wasn't until she name dropped Rosie in a not so subtle way. Using Perez as an example of Latinas booking stereotypical gigs, deeming them the Rosie Perez type of roles. Apparently, Rosie caught wind of the sit-down session because Sister Girl said she was blindsided. This whole time, Perez was thinking the two were cool. But when Rosie dialed Jennifer's number one day, Jen refused to pick up nor call back. Long and behold, time passed before the two crossed paths at a nightclub, and to Rosie's surprise, Jen was all smiles. What would have been a happy ending was anything but, because Rosie was not here for the phoniness and let her have it right then and there. As of today, both women have since moved on from the drama, but it doesn't look like the two will be sitting down for coffee anytime soon. So much for that in Living Color reunion. Did you know Rosie Perez and Jennifer Lopez had beef? Let us know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments and stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.